This episode of the Barclay Street Podcast is presented by the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation, a proud partner of the Bulldogs. Join us in helping kids understand the importance of loving the game, not the odds. For tips on talking to your kids about the risks of sports betting, visit lovethegame.vic.gov.au. Hello and welcome to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barkley Street. We're going to get straight into it today. Easton, do not interrupt me, you <laughs> boringly handsome, gorgeous bastard that you are. How are you, Mike? Oh, I'm nice great, to Toge. Good tonight. to be here. Good to be here. And we've got the we've got the sponsor again, Toj. I know. Two in a row. Look I think out. that's I think they're committed. I think that's official commitment. On the up. So uh, Barkley Street. Uh, it's always good. Hey, you got to be able to pay the bills, so that's a that's always a good start for any uh, for any podcast. Uh, how are you, mate? You're looking. You got a big smile on your face. Um, you're back playing footy. Yes. I'm hearing a little whisper. You're half a chance to play in Ballarat in the seniors this week. How are you? How are yeah. the ankles? How are Laverne and Shirley? <laughs> yeah, looking um, very happy, mate. Um, yeah. Played the game on the weekend. A bit of a strange game to start. Yeah, how did um, it go? What, 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 give me the details. What happened? <laughs> well, uh, a little odd. So we played against Melbourne AFL listed players, but um, and only um, Bulldogs AFL listed players. So there wasn't enough to make up the difference. So Port Adelaide's AFL listed players sprinkled between both teams to make up the difference. So a bit strange. I beg your pardon. Yes. Yeah, so I a beg little, your little, a little Port sprinkle. Um, through through both teams, so uh, just a, a couple of new teammates, of, a little smattering of uh, teal, just couple, a little suggestion. <laughs> yeah, exactly, um, but fortunately, we we're at least able to wear you know the Footscray colours. So th- luckily, that would have been quite weird being the Port boys right. running around in either a dogs kit or Melbourne kit. I felt for them, but so the, so the Port boys quick. had to so the Port boys had to take on a different jumper. Correct. Oh, so that's that a moral victory. Weird. And they were split between and the two teams. So they were playing against themselves and <laughs> the opposition. So really Whoa. odd scenarios. But the best, i got to say, the, 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 the one thing to report was, I don't even remember the name of the, of the player whose nickname this was, but we're getting introduced at the start um, of, of the players because you've got to meet the guys. And I haven't met a lot of the Port boys. So we're introduced. And um, one, one guy doesn't even introduce his name. The boys just say, this is Citrus. And of course, the follow-up question is, why is he called Citrus? And he leans over and he says, yeah. oh, I picked up a Powerade bottle the other day. And I was like, oh, it's citrus flavoured. And he's been citrus ever since. So <laughs> <laughs> I really got around citrus. That was fantastic. So uh, I was calling oh, him out perfect. all day. Um, but yeah, quite strange. But um, as far as the game went, I um, was really happy, mate, to uh, to have a full game under the belt playing against um, AFL listed players. And um my ankle went really well. The, t- the test was I got to the end of the game and I actually realised, I thought, oh, I hadn't actually thought about the ankle the whole time. So, you know, felt good, good. Um, felt confident, felt fast and, um, yeah, put my hand up for selection this week. So, fingers crossed. And uh, and the obvious question, um, how'd Citrus go? <laughs> um, he went all right. I, I had a lot of joy um, calling out Citrus from, from behind him multiple times, <laughs> getting him to slide or getting him to push over. Citrus, move, mate. <laughs> Go. Yeah, I, I feel like I need a Citrus in my life. I'm <laughs> now on the lookout for some. For I didn't think it would roll life. off the tongue that well, but it really, oh, it's a great <laughs> it really hit It hit a really good area. I really got around it. It is um, it is one of those things, you know, when they say, you know, footy clubs, they're all... They're, they're different but they're all the same there is there's something citrus there's something there's a bit of an homage to Archie Selleck about the type there of citrus definitely thing. is it's, it's of, just a matter of you rolling with it enough had a, enough weighted numbers to roll with it that's uh that's that's good I really like that I'm gonna get a citrus into my life uh, can we <laughs> chat about the Cody Waitman um mark Oof. gee I got excited the other night is it the it, straight question <laughs> is it just purely the greatest bulldogs mark ever Oh wow, wow. Okay, Tosh. Now so I take, didn't, take I didn't the, expect you going scenario. down that that path so quickly. Are you getting a bit excited? I think well, you might I, be putting well, the old cart before the horse. Now I don't want to take anything away from Cody's mark. It's it's incredible. Um, but best ever? Are we going? Well, is this another me, segment tell, coming? <laughs> well, tell me who's tell me who's is better. Take the sit, and this is not situation. So yep. don't you can't can't play oh, I was a grand final you know the you know or a prelim final and or, someone took an amazing hanger in that or yeah well yeah that's not that's not fudge over the yeah that's <laughs> not get bogged down <laughs> by the detail see 
I can see I've taught you something. You've brought it back to you. That's <laughs> clever. That's, that makes plug. you proud. Uh, it's up there. It's up there. Yeah, look, um, you've put me on the spot. I'm trying to think. Um, definitely, I feel, I feel I'd like, say, yeah, obviously like the best mark this year. I think Naughty's sideways hanger was pretty impressive. And you had Lockie Hunter's mark running back with the flight as the fourth best mark in the season this year. So you're saying Cody's is better than that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, oh, it's, it's, uh, now it's a full... Well, um, where is it in the, the in the terms of the league for, for the top? Where do you put it there? Cody's? Yeah. Is it better it's than O'Brien's so who you couldn't remember last week? Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Tim O'Brien. <laughs> Shout out to Timmy. Um, it's in the five. There's five. There's okay. a clear five. I don't. I. I. I don't know. It's. It's a contender. It's yep. the best. It's the best um, collection of uh, marks for mark of the year we've ever seen. So um. Yeah. Anyway, we'll let people. Uh, people out there can decide. Um. Can we just quickly before we we're gonna welcome our our uh, our special guest Bailey Dale in a second after a quick break. We're very excited to, to chat to him and, and officially welcome him into the fraternity of halfback <laughs> flankers. He, That's it. Yeah, we sensed great things in we did. in Bailey and it, it took a while for him to work out that his rightful spot was the halfback flank. We had to, he, he had to work it out for himself. But he's yeah, finally sometimes done you've got to experiment, Bob, and that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. A little dalliance. All for a summer romance. No problem. <laughs> Go up there. Go up there, young fella. Have a little, have a little flutter. Gosh. Kick a couple. No problems. <laughs> this is the promised land. Yeah. HBF. So we'll, we'll welcome in, into the fraternity. But I just wanted to quickly welcome the the new draftees for the AFLW team in Amanda Ling, Aurora, Aurora Smith, and Elizabeth Snell. Welcome aboard to the Bulldogs and the AFLW team. It's um exciting time. Something something very pure about being drafted. Mm. You know all about that, Eastern. Absolutely. Um, very special. So shout out to those young women. Um, let's have a quick break because I want to get stuck into this chat with Bailey Dale and talk some Olympics and talk some footy and talk about taking on the Crows this week at Mars Stadium in Ballarat. Welcome back to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street, and it is a very, very big honour for Ethan and I to welcome our next guest, Bailey Dale. But I'm just going to take a moment. This is um, unprecedented. <laughs> oh, but where are we going? I'm, we're just going to get. We're just going to get serious. This is gonna, just a tiny bit of ceremony. Doesn't feel like you're going serious. And then, just shut up, Ethan, <laughs> for a second. <laughs> just, just want to get this right. Now, by the power vested in me by Bruce Dahl, Corey Enright, and Rowan Smith, oh. I officially welcome Bailey Dale to the Halfback Flank Fraternity. Bailey. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, your... it's, good to, it's good to be back there. Um, obviously, it's... it's taken a few years, but we finally got there. Um, it's you'll, been great. Does it feel like home instantly? Get... Because it looks like... It looks like you've played there since you started. Yeah, it has felt a little bit like home. Um, obviously, Bob playing back there as well. Um, back in the day, I got to watch the best do it. So, um, Wait, hang on, we'll just we'll just stop you there. Jason, this, you never have, interrupt again. Have you set this up, Bob? Or no, no, no. You just, nah. you just worried that you've listened to other podcasts and seen how it can get a little bit aggressive at times. <laughs> you got to stay on the and good just, side. <laughs> that's brown nosing at its best. Well done. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, been, it's been, been great. That's experience. You can't teach that. It's been great to you be back there. You know what? I'm actually so used to doing this podcast with Easton that as soon as you started saying that, I thought, oh, he's setting me up here to say that that I'd cost him a spot there while I was playing. I was <laughs> well, like, that's oh, where I was going next, <laughs> actually. Uh, you yeah, you took long enough to go, so, so I had to wait there my time. Is. And we're there. <laughs> there it is. Uh, oh, well done. <laughs> but uh, talk uh, us through yeah. um, how it actually came about, mate, and the start of the year. And was it something that you, know, you had had in your back pocket or you thought um, was going to happen? Or is it something that just sort of popped up as an opportunity and you've just taken it with both hands? Yeah, I guess sort of last year, um, in and out of the team and sort of fell away out of the team um, at the end of last year and I uh, had a little chat to Bevo at the start of this year just seeing um, if I was going to be playing forward or the wing um, really worked on my fitness in the preseason. Um, but he said um, there's, a, there's an opportunity potentially back uh, we'll see how the preseason pans out and um, yeah we'll go from there and then uh, that first game against Hawthorne I think it was here um, played, played up forward kicked a couple and then got the tap on the shoulder and said yeah, Bay, you're going back in the last quarter here, mate. And I was like, oh, God, <laughs> not already. <laughs> I've started off shocking. But, um, yeah, went back and then played the Melbourne practice game, sort of took my chance from there. And, yeah, haven't looked back. It's been good. 
Was it done. was it kind of a gradual thing for your bales, like in terms of y- your confidence and belief and just the working it all out, or was it was there a moment where you like you just felt like you've in the right spot? Yeah, I think initially, um, just to get the positioning and um, know when to run off, when to defend, that took me a little bit. Um, I was probably very very offensive and still am. Probably need to defend a little bit more at times, but. Um, I think playing the wing previously, um, early on in my career, is sit behind the ball and you can sort of read the play. It's very similar. Um, but, yeah, yep. to start back and then be able to run off my opponent um, and use a footy, it's, yeah, it's obviously you get to see the game and it's a lot different to um, trying to see what's going to happen up forward um, and read the play from there. But, yeah, really enjoying it so far. What's been the particular, the, the most difficult thing for you to adjust to? Um, coming back there, obviously playing forward, you probably knew, um, get a really good insight and knowing yourself what you don't like from from defenders. But you know, being in their shoes now, what have you felt that's been the the hardest thing to transition to? Um, yeah, just knowing that you've always got an opponent. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, in the back line, uh, in the forward line, they're following you a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the cheeky ones that get out of the back, they're the <laughs> hardest ones. So I've um, got to keep my eye on them, and obviously. Um, talk from behind from you, Keithy and, and Doc and guys like that um, really helped me. And um, yeah, it's been it's mm. been a challenge so far, but just trying to get that balance right. It's um, yeah, it's been good. Mm. How much work has Rowan Smith been putting in with you, Bales, to to get that balance right of you know defending opponent and then and then attacking and creating? Yeah, well, obviously Bubba is a very offensive half backman <laughs> as well, so um, he's obviously. So to keep that creativity down back and um, play to my strengths, but always have that sort of defend first mindset that we talk about, um, and just try try be as defensive as possible. But then when when the opportunity arises mm. to get on the offense, um, go for it and yeah, use yep. the ball well. <laughs> now there's been days, lots of days up forward where you can go quarters without touching the ball. Sometimes halves on those really 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 hard yeah. days. Um, Easton, you tell us about your experience. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> For those uh, avid avid watchers might remember a couple uh, of preseason <laughs> games I played as a forward and didn't touch it till half time. Yeah. Um, I did a preseason as a forward. I uh, really yeah. enjoyed it and yeah. played a half there and didn't touch the ball in <laughs> round one, 2018. So I've been back yeah. ever since. So you know, some experiments work. Bailey's Bailey's done really well uh, from the switch. Obviously, m- uh, my attempt at it not quite so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a real dark day early on in your career up forward, didn't you? Oh, yeah, that was a hard one. We played GWS. We lost by, I think it was 80 or 90 points. And yep. um, there was a bit, I kicked it. I should I, I transgress a bit, but Bob, you'll remember from the footage we had this year, I kicked a goal against the Gold Coast this year, which was fantastic. But it was my first goal in five years. And the asterisk to that was I played as a forward for a year <laughs> within that period and didn't kick one. So... <laughs> Uh, it had been a while between drinks, but I've forgotten where I even started the question. How did this yeah, turn on to... No, oh, right. that's right. You don't touch the ball up forward, as yes. I know. <laughs> yes. But now you, you're kicking in. Is that the <laughs> is that uh, the biggest breath of fresh air in the world? It uh, definitely helps, obviously, <laughs> just to stay involved in the game. Um, but yeah, obviously, that's where our offense starts. And yeah. um, if you can hit an early target and get us, ro- get us rolling out of that back line, um, it's a really important role. And I take great pride in taking the kick outs, mm. I think... Um, yeah, it's critical to the way we move the ball. So, um, yeah, sometimes you just take the foot out of the square and <laughs> get a little stat next to your name at times. But, um, no, it's good to start with the footy and um, it's been great to get my hands on it a little bit more this year. Bales, when you grab the ball out of the bucket, do you are you already sort of thinking of um, the more likely sort of option you're going to take? Or do you sort of... is it, Are you better off just having sort of you know clarity of just nothing and then just see what unfolds in front of you yeah well usually it's Keithy throwing the ball back to me um so he gets the ball chucks it back and then I have a little bit of time oh, to scan the, the field do it. Um, don't even have to get the ball out of the bucket that's yeah at times it. yeah he's good Keith he's a really good teammate back there um <laughs> but yeah I think just clarity um just going out there and just seeing seeing what's available to me and just hitting the target that's open um yeah I think if you keep it really simple and then go from there um that's probably your best option if you try to create too much um you find yourself in a bit of trouble and if you miss kick one down there it's going straight <laughs> back over your head so um yeah try to keep it as simple as possible so easton and i um both have you know been all australian defenders and your name has been um thrown up this year as you know as potential you know all australian and, and we fingers crossed we hope you do i think you've had a good enough year to to be in that conversation are you finding that other um 
uh, other teams are putting a bit more time into you and were you offended by the way that I snuck in there that Ethan and I were both all Australians at the I'm start just glad you added me in there Toge I thought you were just going to just say yourself <laughs> a little bit of a pump up on the, uh, the own podcast there no I like that um, I guess yeah a little bit more attention um, towards the back end of the year I think um, yeah at the start of the year they probably didn't know what I was doing as much with the ball and how I sort of play but um, teams obviously do their research a lot more these days and um, there is a little bit more attention there but yeah you just gotta you gotta adapt um, they're always gonna try to shut shut you down and um, if I can just keep doing what I'm doing at the moment um, yeah I'll be pretty happy absolutely so we've got the Crows this week um, in Ballarat um, how are the boys feeling you can sort of both speak to this how's the locker room you sort of through the what you know used to be called the grind we're almost through July sun starting to peak its way through is you, can you feel the optimism building of you know a finals campaign I mean we are sitting on top of the ladder we can't sort of you know we can't sort of sit here and pretend that that's not happening it's been a, it's been an incredible season so far yeah it's been really positive um obviously at the start of July we did speak about that grind and how these month uh, these couple of months are probably the coldest and the hardest to get through um you're starting to feel a little bit sore um yeah the the, the cold weather starts to set in. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're obviously looking to forward to getting down to Ballarat. Um, oh, it's going to be a bit of a shame. There's going to be no no crowd, yeah. I think, at this stage. Um, but, yeah, we, we play that ground pretty well, and um, we had a good win last time against Adelaide up there a couple of years ago. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to getting down there, and it's obviously not a great trip for them, fly in, or I don't know what they're doing, but the drive down to Ballarat when it's wet and cold is probably not great. So um, we've got that little mindset over them, I think, at the moment, and um, hopefully it rolls into the game. Absolutely. Should we get into the, uh, the, the question time? questions? To, I, th- I think it's time. Now, and you've got a bit of an announcement think, here, Bobbo. Yeah. How are you going to tackle this one? Well, we, uh, we need to call time of death <laughs> on one of our standard questions. Um, I'm not sure if it's all the listeners or if it's just us but if I have to hear one more player say that Dennis Rodman was the most interesting part of the Last Dance documentary I might just project I'll be <laughs> just wanted a little bit more variety it's um, getting a little bit sort of tired we're with it we've got a, hey when you when something's over, you got to put your hand up and acknowledge. And look, that we've it's given over. it. We've given it our best. It probably died <laughs> three or four weeks yep. ago. We've ploughed through, <laughs> uh, head in the sand for Wait. a bit, thinking it'll turn, yep. it'll turn. But yep. it's it's waned on you. It's waned on me. It's done. Yeah. So I think so today. <laughs> so Bales, we won't we won't walk you through it. So you, you're off the hook. You don't have to answer the question of who is your most. Sounds like it was a thrilling question anyway. By the sounds. Dance. Yep. Yep. So, but we will ask you. We will ask you the other two standards. But whilst um, whilst we're on the topic, we will put this out to the uh, to the loyal listeners of Barclay Street of what should be added to the standard questions for our for our current players at the uh, at the end of the podcast. So yeah, I'll ask you best. the first one, Bales, and that yep. is simply what movie terrified you as a young kid? Uh, I had Jumanji. Jumanji was oh, frightening. That was me too. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what about what about it was, but because um, it was scary. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was like Being the music, kid. like the lions, the snakes, whatever. Jumped Playing a out. board game and getting sucked in for life. Yeah, that'll um, get you. <laughs> Never want to play a board game again. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty terrifying as a kid. Um, that was terrifying. that was probably my most scary movie back in the day. Uh, Oof, yeah, great that, answer. Yeah. <laughs> that vine thing that was pretty creepy. The vine. Yeah, and there's a part later in the in the film. And they swing out on the vine and a lion comes out and tries to swipe them. And I remember that being the moment I just got... Un- I was at the cinema and I got under the yeah. chairs at the cinema, full tears and crying. <laughs> and yeah. I spoke to my dad, who uh, reminded me years ago, and he, he said to me, he goes, yeah, it was prob- I probably uh, misread that one. It was probably a little bit beyond you <laughs> at five or yeah. six or whatever it was. That's so. good. Uh, yeah, playing good fun, yeah. but on to the uh, next one. Now, now this question our, has been an absolute, favorite. absolute home run. Our favourite, um, the great Archie Salek, <laughs> the stalwart of the of the club, got a nickname for everybody. Yeah. Does he have one for you? And and what is it? Yeah, he he does. Um, he calls me Aspen for Aspendale. <laughs> um, obviously, I grew up in <laughs> Chelsea Heights, Aspendale, Edafal area. So um, he's rolled with that for a little while, but. Uh, there's obviously three Baileys at the club. Oh wait, there's more. Yeah, so 
when when one of us walks past him, he always goes, "There's only one Bailey around here," and then the other one will hear it and he'll be like, "Oh, oh, oh don't know what to do." So, he, I think he just uses that on uh, every time we walk past him. So but every Bailey gets, "There's only one Bailey around yeah, here." Yeah, I haven't actually heard that one. When yet. Uh, obviously <laughs> there isn't, but uh, yeah, he's a he's a funny man, Archie, and. Um, yeah, he's got some. Aspen. He's got some good nicknames. Oh, doesn't he ever? Aspen, that's fantastic. Oh, he's done his research there. He has. <laughs> he's put, he the has. put the work. He's put the work in. It just fills me with happiness every week. Yeah. The Archie's <laughs> nickname question. And just to know um, that he's at training every day, doing that, and just hitting yeah. guys between the eyes with every, every single time. one of he his own miss. nicknames, and yep. with a consistency that is just unparalleled. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, you say consistency. I say relentlessness. <laughs> <laughs> Very relentless. <laughs> Oh, golly gosh. Hey, um, Bales, it's so good to have you uh, on the podcast, Barclay Street. Um, it's even better to have you uh, in the halfback flank um, club. Uh, we love what you're doing, mate. You're having a sensational season. Um, you're a bloody good forward, but you are, you're an absolute uh, maestro of a halfback flanker, and uh, we love watching you play. We love the way the boys are going. Um, Eason, hopefully we get to see you out on Mars Stadium this week in Ballarat. Um, yep. Make it nice and tough for the Adelaide Crows. Get another win. Stay on top of the ladder. Keep our eyes on the prize. And to all the Bulldog supporters out there, send in your questions. Send in your um, responses for what you think the uh, question should be. And just a little reminder that we will be getting Archie Salek on the, on the yes, Barclay Street bonus podcast edition. at some stage this year. <laughs> and if that doesn't get you excited, <laughs> I'm afraid... Nothing will. <laughs> uh, we'll catch you next week. Have fun at the footy.